Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Live Scratcher. This is a device for Ableton Live and Max for Live and it's used to emulate a DJ scratching sound. First of all you will need Max for Live for this to work so you'll need either Ableton Live Suite or Ableton Live Standard with Max for Live installed. It's tested on Live 11 and 12 but the included example set that you see in here uh, will only work on Live 12. So what can you do with Live Scratcher? Well first of all you've got two built-in samples, the R sound and the fresh sound. These are probably the most commonly used samples that a Scratch DJ would use. So you're given control of a playhead which when moved over the sample uh, will act kind of like a vinyl record would when you're pushing it backwards and forwards under a needle. In order to actually hear this you either have to hold down a MIDI note or you can turn this note gate option off. Uh, with note gate on, here I'm tapping out sort of a rhythm on my push and moving the playhead at the same time. So there are various ways you can control this playhead movement. You can do it either manually with the mouse or you can use this uh, turntable parameter which controls this playhead here and you can draw in your own automation curves so the bottom here represents the start of the sample top here represents the end of the sample and you would move it forwards and backwards over time so this is an example of what this would sound like and here I've used kind of MIDI notes to tap out a rhythm as well So you can control the playhead this way with automation envelopes or you can use various other methods. Um, you can use a MIDI controller. So here I'm using a fader mapped to uh, the turntable parameter. <laughs> And another example, um, I'm using the flow file device to use my phone as a controller using the accelerometer data from the phone. <laughs> And I'll leave a link for this device in the description. You can also use your push to control it. In fact, all of the parameters on Live Scratcher are mapped to push. But here I'm manually turning the turntable parameter on my push. <laughs> You can also use the built-in LFO to control the turntable parameter uh, and I'll come to this shortly. Next let's look at loading your own custom samples in there. So you've got the R and the fresh sounds which are the typical DJ scratch sounds but obviously you can add your own as well. Um, there are slots here for four different user samples. 
And there are two ways you can add user samples into here. You can either drag and drop them from your user library or from uh, anywhere where you have samples stored. So let's just go into my current project. And I've got some that I've already uh, recorded here. And you would just simply drag and drop that into one of these four user slots here. Which you can see I've already done with a few of the samples. So as well as drag and dropping samples in there, you can also record from any of the other tracks you have in your live set. And you would do this through uh, this section here. You can expand and contract this section, which just opens and closes uh, the recording functions and the presets, which I'll come to later. And you select the track you wish to record from, from the drop down menu. You've also got gain control for the incoming volume. You can monitor what's coming in, should you wish to, and then you'd use any of these four record buttons to record into the corresponding user sample slot. There's a maximum length of five seconds. So once you press record, after five seconds, it will automatically shut off and it will move whatever you've recorded into the corresponding user sample slot here. Or you can stop it manually. And when you stop it manually, it'll just copy over into the user sample slot. If you want all your recorded samples to be the same volume, then make sure that you have normalize selected there. This is useful if you're recording things in live and you want to instantly volume match um, the rest of the samples that are in the device. Pressing these again on one that you've already recorded in will just write over the last sample that you've recorded in there. So if you want to make sure that the sample is going to be there when you've saved your set and you reload your set again, you need to make sure that you save whatever you've recorded here first. So if you click the corresponding save button, here I'm saving it into my um, live set in the samples recorded folder. Then once you have saved your sample, you need to drag and drop it back in to one of the user sample slots. Doing this will ensure that when you save your set and you load it again, the sample will still be there in the slot where it should be. If you don't save it, the sample will just go. It won't save whatever's in the buffers here, unfortunately. So here are a few examples of how I've used incoming audio um, to record onto an empty user sample slot and then to scratch with it. Oh yeah. So the other few parameters I haven't actually explained yet here are drag. Drag will sort of introduce friction. When it's at its very, very lowest, the turntable parameter is the most responsive to movement, but it sounds very, very scratchy and digital. Um, with it at its highest, it will respond slower to movement, but it will sound more like traditional vinyl wood when you're um, pushing it backwards and forwards under a needle. Gain is straightforward enough, that's just the volume level. Velocity to volume, with this on, the gain will respond to note velocity. And finally, there's this little turntable graphic. This is purely for decoration, and it just responds to turntable movement to give you kind of a, a DJI view um, <laughs> with a marker of whereabouts in the sample you currently are. So the other way we have of controlling the turntable movement is through the built-in LFO. I'll turn it on here, and I'm just going to unlock it um, so that it isn't locked to the transport. It just runs kind of freely. 
And we've got four different LFO shapes we can use. There's the sine wave, the ramp, the triangle shape, and the custom LFO shape, which is following the shape I've created here. You can create your own shapes just by dragging these points around. You can add further points just by clicking in there. If you hold shift, you can delete one of the points. If you hold down the alt key, this will change the shape of the line. You can reverse the shape of the LFO when it's any of these first three here. So we can change a ramp up, which will basically play forwards through the sample from start to end. We can reverse that so that would play backwards through the sample instead. You can also re-trigger the LFO, uh, but you can only do this when it's in Hertz or free control mode here. Um, we can just kind of re-trigger that whenever we like. So with that in mind, we've also got these controls here, which you can control it much like the LFO device in Ableton. Uh, you can lock it to note values, or you can have it free running and change it in Hertz values. And these other controls here are very much like the standard controls in um, Ableton Live's LFO. So we've got the offset, which will move around the center point of the LFO. Depth, which is how far the LFO travels from the center point. So with an offset set to um, the middle and with depth at full, we can see that the playhead moves all the way through the sample there. If we decrease the depth, it's going to move in sort of shorter shorter bursts if you will. Phase will basically just move it forwards and backwards in time and curve will apply a curve to the LFO shape. So there it is with a curve all the way up almost and with a curve all the way down it will do the opposite. And finally humanize much like a DJ wouldn't move the record to the exact same points every single time and at exactly the same speed when they're moving the record backwards and forwards, Human Eyes kind of adds um, a, a bit of randomness to that. So it's going to sound a little more natural. And here are some examples of um, the LFO being used. <laughs> And this brings me to the last section here, which is the preset selection. Basically what the presets are, are snapshots of different LFO settings. So here we have one that I've used for this, um, for this particular pattern here, which is kind of a shark fin shape with a little bit of human eyes in it. I think they've all got human eyes in, uh, involved somewhere along the line actually. I've got a slightly different kind of shape with slightly different settings that I've used for this one here. And another one. And what I'm doing here, I'm just automating this preset selection, which is another thing you can do with automation. So here I'm using preset 13. With this clip, I'm telling it to use preset 14.
um, 15. So this basically just uh, just selects the preset as, it, as the clip moves. <laughs> So yeah, the presets will store any of these settings here. They'll also store information about which sample you've selected as well. And your drag and gain controls and your note gate and basically every other, other function in Live Scratcher. The thing not to do, I found, is to use presets and automation at the same time, unless you're just using um, automation to control the turntable and the preset select. Otherwise, they kind of clash with each other a little, uh, which you'll find if you if you ever try to use them both at the same time. So I'd recommend using either automation entirely or presets, but only automating the preset selection in the clip uh, or the turntable movement in the clip. So that's it for now. Um, if you want a more detailed explanation, I've left a link to the manual in the description. And you can also refer to my previous video on Live Scratcher, which goes into everything in a little more detail, especially kind of creating clips and things like that. I've also left a link in the description to where you can download the device. It's free with an option to pay what you want. And if you think it's going to be something that you like and you enjoy, any contribution, however small, will be very much appreciated. Okay, that's it for now. I'll see you next time.